Mari's story brought tears to my eyes when I first heard it, and she's not the only one we met at SEEK. Father Nathan Ford is a priest of the Canons Regular of St. John Cantus. Based in Chicago, the order has a special calling to lead and minister to high schoolers. Father Nathan is the chaplain of the pro-life group Crusaders for Life. Here's his story. Okay, so Father, you uh, lead the Crusaders for Life mm -hmm. as a part of your ministry within your order. Talk to me a little bit about what you do. Yeah, the Crusaders for Life were founded at our parish about 20 years ago or so, and it's uh, our pro-life teen group that was founded there, but it's spread to other parishes as well, where we probably have, at this point, maybe seven, 800 kids that are involved in it, um, really across the Midwest, but I'm the chaplain at our parish at St. John Cantius um, for, the, for the group that's there. So I oversee their spiritual um, growth in this area. I oversee some of the meetings. We have a lot of them they, uh, that work organizing it. Um, so a president, vice president, and they, they do a lot of the work, but I, I help oversee their efforts and speakers that come in and then leading them to marches and rallies throughout the Midwest and the country even, so. That's wonderful, and speaking of uh, kind of ministering to these young people, we're here at SEEK with nearly 20,000 yeah, young people from all over the country. Could you speak to the importance of having priestly, fatherly figures in their lives, especially in a culture that's increasingly against our faith, we're increasingly seeing attacks against what is true and what is beautiful? I think it's really important for them to have spiritual fathers in their lives because so many kids these days are coming from broken homes and broken families. There's that even broken trust within you know institutions, even the church that's there. And so to have solid men and even women, right, who are able to lead them and to be spiritual fathers, be spiritual mothers um, in this time of need is really important for them to help guide them through all the mess that's out there in the world. Because kids these days are encountering things, I'm not that old, I'm only 30, but I didn't encounter in my upbringing. And so to have that and to have someone that they can trust and someone they can turn to, I think is really important. Right, and in the context of the abortion issue, that's really important too, having male leaders, strong men who are pro-life. Um, could you talk to me a little bit about your role as a, as a pro-life man within our broader movement? I think it's to, it's, for, it's important for us to witness that this, this isn't okay and this isn't bringing healing and this isn't dignifying women or, or helping them in this moment of need and hurt and pain and confusion that they find themselves in. And that's important for us, even as men. A lot of times, you know, pro-choices would say they don't want to hear from men, all right? They have no role in this, but we absolutely have a role in this. We have a big role in this. Yeah. And so for us to be there and to witness is important and I think, I always think to St. Joseph and that calm presence, but he's present, right? And he's there. So one of the big things is our kids, the Crusaders, you know, they not only go to rallies, right? They're known for their balloons and their drums and all of that. And they're bright yellow. And they're bright yellow, <laughs> yeah. But they go to clinics regularly, every month, you know, 6.30 a.m., there's 30 high schoolers, downtown Chicago, praying outside and half or more are men, are young men, high schoolers, college students who are outside praying, you know, being that sometimes silent witness that, hey, like this isn't the answer, but we're gonna stand here and we're gonna be here and we're gonna pray for you. And I think that's really important uh, for men to have that role. Yeah, that's a beautiful witness. And talk to me a little more about the activities that the Crusaders are involved in in the Chicago area. So the Crusaders are involved in a lot in the Chicago area. We meet once a month and we have different speakers come in, whether that's Students for Life or Aid for Women, um, and they get a lot of good formation. And then they ha they'll have breakout sessions and be able to talk in small groups. So that happens monthly. But then they are, they're also going to the abortion clinics to pray regularly. We participate in any rallies um, or events that happen in downtown Chicago. Um, but our main focus has been really since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, on a national level is at that state level, especially going to Springfield, to the capital, Illinois, needs a lot of prayers, a lot of witness. Yes. So we've been going down there and we bring several hundred kids down there to participate and to pray and to help 
you know, make sure that our voices are heard while Congress is in session there. So that, that's a big, big part of our focus. Yeah, and that's very important in such a strongly pro-abortion state, right on the border of Missouri, where we're, right. we're at now, that's very pro-life. Right. Um, before I let you go, Father, could you tell me a little bit, for our viewers who don't know, about St. John Cantius and uh, kind of his witness and his, his leadership role? Yeah, St. John Cantius was a college university professor, and he was, he was the chaplain to young people. And they would always go to Father John, this holy and loving, this gentle witness that was there. He taught theology, but he was also the chaplain at the, the church right across the street, St. Anne's. And so students would flock to him for confession and guidance because college students haven't changed that much in 600 years. <laughs> There's still a lot of confusion and turmoil. Sure. And so um, through his just his gentle witness and his charity that he was known for, um, he was able to save a lot of people and help them through a lot of confusing times. And so that's something that we as an order, the canons, try to emulate. And something I myself working with young people, whether it's the Crusaders or any young people that come to me as a priest, you know, I look to Father John to be that, that mentor for me, that example. Right, a perfect example for today's priests and seminarians. Father, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you for having me.